In this tutorial we are going to learn how to install Octane for Blender and also how to create a simple scene like this using Vectron and our freebie file available from our website. So we need a few things like uh, Octane Render Installer for Blender and Octane Server. Then on our website you can download the free files required to create this scene. Okay, now after installing Octane Server and Octane for Blender, just double click on Octane Server and you will see a little icon here. Right click on that and click on Activation and Login into your Otoy account and that's it. So now you can start Blender Octane Edition. Now we just need to activate Octane and to do that you go under Edit Preference and search for Octane. Mine is already activated. So let's start by configuring the layout. You can drag any window here in the corner. So let's do some layout. Here we are going to need the text editor. And here we need the shader editor. Okay. And to activate Octane and actually render with that, you can, you can get on the render icon and switch it to Octane. And also here you need to go on Viewport Shading button. So this is Octane Render, you can see all the informations here, but there's no light, so let's add that. In the Shader Editor, you can go under Object and change it to Word and change the word output to Octane, get rid of this background node and with Shift A, search for Daylight. Now you can connect this environment to Octane environment and you will see you have a nice diffuse light from the skylight. To get some fractals and Octane Vectron to work in Blender, we need to set up the material. So we can change the word here to Object, selecting the cube, and we can get rid of the, this node, and change the output to Octane. Now you can do Shift-A and search for Vectron, and just connect that to Octane Geometry. Also we need to rename, it's a good habit, this to Vectron Material, and now we can just insert here in the text editor the OSL file we just downloaded from the website. So just open that, select all, and copy, and then create a new text document and paste it here. Rename this if you want. General EFS Fractal, so click on that and hit compile and you should see all different fractal parameters here. So the first thing, I don't know why this happened, but we need to change the iteration to something bigger like 80 and you see it sometimes it doesn't update, I don't know why, but we still don't see any fractal in here. So to do that we need to assign the Vectron object to the cube and to do that you can select the node graph Vectron material and obtain GeoNode to Vectron. Now you should see the fractal. Now it's obvious that something is wrong because it's like a cube and to do to change that you can just increase the bounds. Everything looks right and we can disable the grid and overlays here by clicking on this icon. And that was pretty fun. So uh, we can also change uh, the light position if you want. You can just go back to the word node system and click on the sphere here. And you can position the sun where you want. Something like this. And now we can start to cover the shading of the fractal. So to do that, go. let's go back to the object be sure to have the cube selected and we can start to add a diffuse material. Now assign the diffuse material to geometry material like this and I'm going to use some gradient images so just 
copy that you can use any image copy connect to the diffuse and you will see a nice color pattern on the fractal if you don't see that just change and play with the color period and offset as there's many different ways the color can be um, warped on the fractal i'm already happy with this one so let's stick to that you can also change the different shape by playing with different parameters it's really fun and i'm going to stick with the default one and we can start to set up the camera so to do that click on the little icon here toggle camera view and i'm going to scroll in with the mouse wheel and when i see that i cover the entire screen i just go here on this little arrow and enable the octane post process that's for later you can hide this in this way and under where is that under view you can local camera and select the camera but also you can lock the camera view like that so when you go around the camera is going to stay fixed and is going to follow you basically and if you click the toggle camera you see now you are free to move but it's not what you you are not seeing what the camera sees so just stick to this and now we have access to different options like we can change the opacity of these these parts and to do that go under camera under viewport display you can change the pass per two i prefer to work like this and let's have some fun with the post processing so always here on the little arrow you can have access to the octane imager preview let's make some space you can change the exposure let's decrease that a bit and enable aces and of course you can change you can enable the denoiser and a cool thing about the post process is the chromatic alteration just don't abuse this and let's go a bit closer and now you can actually change the aperture of the camera so if you go on the camera object and here camera icon you should see the aperture where is that here so if you increase that it's going to create a nice depth of field and that, that's basically it so you can change the focus distance by disabling the autofocus here and change manually change the focus distance but that's pretty much it so let's say we are happy with this image and we just want to save this and render this out so the first thing is you need to set up the number of samples click on the small render icon and create a new default kernel just close this and you will see max samples and max preview samples if you want to know how many samples you are rendering now you can enable the over overlays here and you will see we are at 200 and something so i think 500 will be fine and we will have um, no noise in the image so let's leave it at 500 if you want you can also render with different kernels like this is without any um, global illumination and we can also switch to a path tracer which is here and this is looking uh, going to look better but it's going to take more time so i'm going to stick on direct light kernel and now we can just move on and go to the render render image now the render is finished and you can just go on image and save as and save as png or jpeg whatever you want if you enjoyed this tutorial and octane vectron on our website you can play with these different formulas we have different packs like Vectron Pack 
4, which is the latest and has different kind of fractals. And also it's Blender supported, so you can play with that. And we have a lot of tutorials. Many tutorials are for Cinema 4D, but you can simply adapt to Blender or if you need a specific help, just please reach out to us. We also have Discord, so feel free to join. And see you guys soon.